So I'm very pleased to be here. And thank you for the invitation. Building back better. I think we have a, an opportunity here to um, make the world a better place. You know, there is an opportunity um, coming out of this awful crisis. And um, I'd like to split my slides, which will take about 10 minutes into maybe two main sections. Number one is the first slide, which is the short term response um, of Old Mutual uh, to the crisis. And the second is the longer term um, integration and sustainability response. In terms of the short term response, um, I like to think we've been reasonably good at this. Um, I hope we have. I think we've done our best. Um, and we've certainly done a lot of, lot of different things. Um, we try to capture it on this slide. Maybe the bottom right is the most tangible in the sense that we have partnered with Lancet um, in terms of testing and, and rehabilitation and treatment facilities uh, and opened um, a number of facilities for, you know, to help with the pressure on beds, um, uh, particularly in the Western Cape region uh, and, and elsewhere. We've also partnered with government uh, in the bottom uh, purple box um, in terms of bringing um, bringing free radio and TV lessons, for example, to learners in grades one to 12, um, and helping uh, within state schools to, to deliver that much needed, um, much needed education at a difficult time. Um, I guess the biggest headline was the four billion rand of free cover to essential healthcare workers, which we did pretty expeditiously towards the start of the crisis. I think we were all quite proud of that in terms of being able to help those workers on the front line in terms of much needed you know, insurance cover. Uh, the Solidarity, Solidarity Fund, we've been very involved in, in terms of both the administration of that fund and helping in that, with that. Um, partnering in terms of our payroll effort, in terms of, 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 of allowing our staff to, to donate in a very efficient fashion to the Solidarity Fund. Again, we did that, I think, fairly early on. And direct assistance. Uh, we've put 90 million rand in total in terms of emergency COVID assistance and also support to SMEs. Uh, and looking around us right now, in terms of the crisis, you know, this is, this is not going away very quickly. Um, the number of cases is accelerating. And the economic damage itself, of course, associated with that is, is, is profound. And I'm sure we all look around us with dismay in terms of the, 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 what this is doing to people's lives and the support that, that businesses are able to provide. Um, luckily, as Old Mutual, I think we have some scale to be able to step into the, into the space there. Next slide, please. So that's our short term response. I think in terms of the longer term building back, building back better, um, you know, we've, we've been working on this, I guess, for a long time. I mean, I, I joined Old Mutual seven years ago from the UK uh, and was really struck by, uh, by the, the social consci the consciousness in terms of Old Mutual and its employees, um, our, our desire to give back to the community and also to partner in terms of our investments for clients um, in uh, investments which, which had some form of impact in terms of the economy around us. And this slide attempts to capture it. Um, it's really a, a symbiotic slide in the sense that, you know, we're lucky enough to have quite a large number of customers ac across South Africa, um, around 6 million um, customers across the country in terms of life insurance and savings policies. And we're able to recycle those savings into investments domestically predominantly, which can further, you know, the betterment uh, of communities and education you know, and healthcare. Uh, and business growth um, across the country, which in itself then helps the people who have entrusted us with their savings. Um, and that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a virtuous loop, you know, when we get it right. Uh, and it's very important that we do uh, get that right in terms of the way we approach um, the investment of that capital for our clients. If I could have the next slide there, thank you. And this next slide captures, you know, what we're trying to do. I think the heading is important, dual focus of our returns focused investments. It used to be an either or for environmental, social and governance um, investing. That's, I, think, I think it has fundamentally changed. Uh, uh, we did try and make that point many years ago. We think it's an additive. Investing, when you're investing in a very direct way in companies where you take into account um, their environmental footprint, their impact on society and their governance structures, um, tends to lead you towards higher quality companies, more sustainable companies and therefore higher return companies. And therefore, the returns you're able to provide to savers is commensurably higher. So we see the integration of ESG, which we do across our investment range, across all um, the many hundreds of billions of, of rand we're, we're entrusted to invest on behalf of our clients. We, we integrate ESG across the board, and we think that's additive to our ability to generate returns for clients. So there's no trade-off here in our mind. 
And secondly, uh, investing directly in impact projects uh, and infrastructure through our real assets program. Um, uh, again, one can have a very direct and positive impact on, on the economy around us through education. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, healthcare and agriculture with very active programs, infrastructure, of course, uh, and all those green related issues which, which go with that, uh, which are essential um, if South Africa is in any way going to come out of this, uh, this crisis in, in, in any way decent shape. I'll catch the next slide, please. And what we're trying to do is deliver that in, in both, as I mentioned, the listed equity arena and the real assets arena. So in listed equity, for example, as well as integrating ESG across the board, we also uh, offer very direct ESG product into the marketplace, which people are, are able to purchase through our retail channels. On the left, in terms of our, our passive or indexation products, you know, we've been doing this for many years now. We have around 30 billion Rand in assets under management. Uh, in global and emerging market um, indexation product with an ESG tilt within that passive framework. And on the right, we're, we're very proud uh, to have launched um, just last week a South African ESG equity fund, which is an active fund uh, which targets those companies with demonstrably superior ESG credentials and those which have a low carbon footprint. So if you were to buy that particular fund, uh, you'd A, get a good ESG within your portfolio, and B, you'd enjoy a 40%, 40% lower carbon footprint uh, than, the, than the index. Next slide, please. Alongside that, we have a, a very substantial um, stewardship program in terms of, of the assets we're entrusted with on behalf of our clients. And, and we engage in two levels. One, on a company by company basis where we have an extensive what we call alpha engagements um, directly with companies. You generally wouldn't see these in the press because they, they tend to, to occur in private. Um, and I think rightly so, unless, unless it gets to the point of, of entering the press. Steinhoff, of course, is one of those which did enter the press, uh, where we continue to be actively engaged on the government's side. Sassel is an interesting one in terms of its carbon footprint. That's a very important engagement for us in terms of balancing the, the, the energy needs of South Africa. Uh, with, it, with, with the broader desire to get to you know, a, a lower carbon footprint as a society. That'll take some time. And on the right, uh, engaging across the market and across the industry uh, with obviously respected industry groups, um, both to, 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 to further environmental and climate change type, type, type endeavors, uh, and also to, to engage in terms of better governance you know, across the market as a whole. I'll take one more slide and then take a, take a couple of questions if there are any at this point. I'm first up, so there may not be questions yet, so I'm, I'm quite comfortable on that. The final slide um, is um, our investment in, in, in real assets um, uh, across, the, across the economy. It's a big number, 131 billion rand invested in the green economy. We're only able to do that because we have, happen to have a large number of clients who entrust us with their savings. And we feel these investments will both generate strong returns and have a positive impact. Um, across the country and increasingly across Africa. So agriculture, you can see we, we own and manage um, 10, 10 farms across South Africa um, and um, employ many workers um, uh, across those farms whom we uh, educate and educate their children and supply housing to. In education, um, I think it's north of 35 schools now um, with well north of 20,000 children across the, across the country. Um, all within the affordable um, school system uh, with a 92% matric pass rate. Uh, renewable energy, probably our biggest program, yes it is our biggest program, 35 billion. Uh, we're hoping to do more there. Um, please allow us to do, do more government. <laughs> we would love to partner with you more on those, those projects which again provide good returns for clients and uh, an essential investment in the strategic asset we have for South Africa in sun and wind, both of which we have a lot of. And finally, affordable housing. Um, we build um, and rent and sell affordable housing across South Africa. Um, and that has a very demonstrable and direct impact um, on those around us within the country. Those are my slides, Natasha. I'll, I'll take any questions if there are any. Perhaps I'll just emphasize one last point before I hand back um, in that sense. Um, I think an obvious question is always um, the, the potential trade-off between generating returns, which we all must do, by the way, and that's a social good in itself, um, and having an impact. You know, is that a trade-off? 
And we're now seeing study after study globally. Uh, Morningstar was the latest one, I think probably the most extensive one, which has um, quote unquote proved according to that study that alpha or, or excess returns um, are greater um, for those portfolios which have an ESG um, uh, a tilt to them or an emphasis within them. Um, and that's, that's, that's obviously terribly good news. And we've seen it in the last uh, uh, year to date as well in terms of this latest crisis where, the, again, those portfolios, I was included, which have an ESG bias, have performed better than the underlying market. So I think that talks to you know, quality of the, those kinds of portfolios, the sustainability of the companies within them. And this crisis is, is teaching us that sustainability is, a, is, is the crux um, of, of good investing uh, and good living um, and good nationhood. So that's, uh, I think, a strong foundation uh, from, which we can, from which we can grow. Thanks, Howell. We've got uh, two questions in the, in the Q&A box. Uh, the first one, what is preventing you from building larger portfolios in these sectors? For example, agriculture, affordable housing and education. Well, that's a great question. Thank you for it. Um, I think you might have noticed my little plea towards the government in terms of, of um, renewable um, infrastructure. I think Old Mutual might have taken 40% of the initial round, which was about eight years ago now. And we do have strategic assets in sun and wind, um, and we can generate an awful lot of electricity from those. And people like us, we're, we're prepared to, to, to put in private capital to those projects. So for government, it's, it's a wonderful public-private partnership. Um, so renewables, we're, 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 we're looking to government because we have to partner with government in terms of those, those arrangements. Uh, and I think we're getting there. Um, things like agriculture, um, again, you know, frankly, the land expropriation program, politics aside, doesn't help in terms of investing into farmland often, particularly for offshore investors who want to invest into Africa. They get concerned that, that you know, we're going we're to get some kind of repeat uh, of a Zimbabwe situation um, in terms of land expropriation. And I'm sure, I'm sure we won't get that. But if you're an offshore investor and you can choose anywhere in the world, then why take that risk? So, um, you know, a stable political and economic environment is terribly important for these long-term projects. So again, it, it, it is a little bit of a partnership with government with a lot of these real assets project, projects. And we're very constructive around that conversation and we'd welcome more of it. Fantastic. Uh, next question, how mature is our investment community to invest in, into ESG in South Africa? I think in, in, in South Africa, we're, we're partly ahead of the curve globally and partly behind it. I think if you look at places like um, America, you know, they are behind us in terms of, of awareness and active integration of ESG into portfolios. Um, uh, Southern Europe would be behind us. Asia would be behind us. The Middle East would certainly be behind us. The UK and the Nordics would be, would be ahead of us. Um, but in South Africa, we have a very mature and, and strong debate in this area. And I'm thrilled to say we've got 12, 12 dedicated ESG specialists within Old Mutual Investment Group uh, who do this all day, all day, every day. And, you know, we're able to, to, to offer those kinds of products and partnerships, which I'm sure um, a lot of our competitors are as well. Um, and so in that sense, we're, we're, we're in a strong part of, of the curve. Where we're behind is our investment into real assets. And often investment into real assets provides that sustainable bedrock for an economy to grow in a sustainable way. So if you take pension funds offshore, um, they'd be averaging around 20% in real asset investment. In uh, South Africa, the number is 2%. So in that sense, in terms of deployment of capital, more assets from pension fund investors into real assets is a win-win because there are good returns to be had, uh, the great sustainable returns, um, and they have a great impact on the economy around us, which we're, uh, we're all going to, our children are going to inherit when, when all these savings come to fruition, and we'll be glad we've done it. And then how, what are the typical return targets across the various sectors? And, and this is a two part question. Also, how are you measuring and reporting on the impact? Um, the measuring piece is fairly actually straightforward. Um, if you were a client and, and you had a listed portfolio with us, you'd get a full uh, responsible investing report in terms of our activity on, on your behalf, in terms of the companies we engage with, uh, the kind of footprint they, they enjoy or otherwise within the portfolio. And then on the real asset side, um, we put the footprint on the slide. 
in terms of the impact, the, the number of people educated, the, the workers supported, and the homes built, the children educated. So in that sense, it's, it's a very direct line of sight in terms of the impact, in terms of the impact you have. In terms of the return profile, it varies. Um, in terms of renewables, you know, that was very strong around the first project. It was high teens, early 20s percent IRRs. Um, now it would be kind of 12, 13 percent, I would guess, um, coming down the line, I would think, when we get those projects hopefully going again. Agriculture would be a little north of that. Uh, again, these are kind of 10, 12 year projects, don't forget. But if you have in your mind for real assets, kind of low mid teens, um, I think that would be a good benchmark, which uh, would be typically oof, three to four percent north of what you should expect an equity market um, investment to do. And then an interesting one here. Uh, so, uh, as from a from a the perspective of a director of a listed company, how um, how can you align that company to be a target for of Mutual's ESG fund? Um, well, that's something we, we attempt to help corporates with um, through our, our engagements with, with, with corporates. And we spend a lot of time in terms of, first of all, their ESG reporting. Um, and, a lot, and a lot of companies getting obviously very good at this now. Hopefully, ourselves included as all mutual. And um, you know that, that awareness profile in terms of the ability of investors to then see exactly what the ESG type approach is of a company. So ESG reporting is important. And, and we spend a lot of time with corporates on that. And actually push them you know very hard in terms of, of the metrics around that and the other associated metric on that which is very important for a corporate where they can align with us is the alignment of incentives of executive management and other uh, members within the organization of that corporate with the esg outcomes so um, it's all very well for, for a company like sassel to say we're going to reduce our, car our, our carbon footprint over the next decade uh, and i think a decade is what we're talking about um, but incentives need to be aligned with that. Um, and that alignment is terribly important. So, so again, we attempt to help corporates with that, those alignment measures. And therefore, that symbiosis I talked about in terms of the savings pool, us as asset managers, the corporates, you know, everyone's benefiting you know, from, that, from that ESG program uh, in, the, in a very direct way. Fantastic. And, um, and then, how does the new ESG fund the index and and this comes with a with a little well done message as well uh, differ from previous uh, indices where perhaps one of the criticisms was that they're not sufficiently sufficiently differentiated from the traditional market great question and thank you for the thumbs up um, but we're, we're absolutely thrilled with this I must say it's been a lot of work um, it's not a, not a benchmark so it's not a passive product it's an active product we will measure its performance against the normal benchmark. Uh, and that allows us to be you know, pretty active uh, against that, that standard benchmark. Trying to construct a passive product is actually very difficult in South Africa, South Africa because you end up a long way away from the regular benchmark. So we prefer to, be an, to have an active approach in that sense. And that allows us using, using our, our own proprietary ESG signals to integrate those, those very strong ESG signals in terms of the best companies, the best in class companies, and those companies which are improving in their ESG credentials to be a, a strong part of that portfolio. Um, and we do believe there is alpha efficacy with that linkage. So we think those companies will perform better as well as being um, better in the ESG category because they are better quality. And it also allows us, allows us to be quite aggressive in terms of a very low carbon footprint you know, for that particular portfolio, for those clients who want that. Um, and I should emphasize, you know, at this point, it, it, you can't go to a, to a zero carbon in South Africa. You know, we, we will take time to get there. So we need to be intelligent in terms of the transition. But as part of a portfolio for those clients who, who would like that kind of much lower carbon footprint, I think it's a great statement. Um, and I think it'll be, it'll be good for our country um, in terms of investing in that kind of portfolio. Thank you so much, Howell. Um, we've, we've got a bunch more questions, but I'm afraid in the interest of time, we're gonna have to move on. Thank you everybody who put together questions. And thank you so much, Howell. That was a, a fascinating insight into the work that Old Mutual is doing and much appreciated. Thank you.